Draw the shear and bending moment diagrams from definition for the beam. The beam has a 200 newton load at one end, a distributed load in the middle with a 100 newton load acting down and a 100 newton load acting up, and this 3,000 newton meter moment acting at 40 meters. Notice that this is already a free body diagram. There's nothing here that we need to solve for. There are no external reactions. Those have already been taken care of. I'm going to break my beam into five chunks. Every time something changes as I walk down the beam, I need another free body diagram. So I'm going to start with X between 0 and 10 meters. I'm going to draw a free body diagram that will have N, V, and M acting on it. Remember, internal forces act at the centroid of your cross-section. Once you've done that, you can solve for those over this integral. Some of the forces in X says N equals 0. Some of the forces in Y says V equals 200. And the sum of the moments, if you take it at the break, tells you that M equals 200X. That one's the easy part. Now, again, X has to start all the way from the left-hand end, always. So when I have my N, V, and M to solve for, now I have to figure out what that distributed load is. Part of it's included in my beam. My beam now goes from 10 to 20, and part of it isn't. So the part of my beam that actually has distributed load over it would be x minus 10. The whole length of my free body diagram is x. 10, 10 meters of it does not have distributed load acting over it. So I've got 10 minus x. Again, n is equal to 0. There's nothing else happening here. If I take the sum of the forces in y, now I have 200 minus 10 times x minus 10 minus v. So v is minus 10x plus 300. I also want to take the sum of the moments, which I will do at the break, like I always do, and I get 200 acting over a distance of x minus the equivalent point load would be 10 times x minus 10, and I'll act in the middle of that x minus 10. So I'm going to have x minus 10 over 2 plus m equals 0. If you multiply that out, you've got m equals minus 5x squared plus 300x minus 500. Now my next free body diagram has the same distributed load. It still acts at x over 10, x minus 10, because it still acts on all of the beam except the first 10 meters. But now I have also this 100 newton point load that acts at 20 meters out. And I'll have my same v, n, and m acting with the appropriate sign conventions. My interval is from 20 to 30. My sum of the forces in x is, of course, n equals 0. Now my sum of the forces in y tells me 200 minus 10 times x minus 10. So far, we're the same. Minus an extra 100 minus v equals 0. So v is now minus 10x, the same minus 10x, but now it's plus 200 instead of plus 300. And if I take the sum of the moments, I now have 200 times x minus 10x minus 10 times x minus 10 over 2. That's the same as we had before. Now I have minus 100 times x minus 20 plus m equals 0. To multiply that out, m is now minus 5x squared plus 200x plus 1500. That's the equation for my line between 20 and 30. Between 30 and 40, there's no point in going from the left-hand end. You could do it, you get the same answer. But if you go from the right-hand end, things are so much simpler. Now my distance is 50 minus x instead of x, because it's the whole length of the beam minus x. x is always measured from the left-hand end. Now my sign conventions are the other way around, because I'm dealing with the other end of my beam. And the only load I have is the moment. So between 30 and 40, n equals 0, v equals 0, and m is 3,000 newton meters. Between 40 and 50, things are even easier if you go from the right-hand end. Between 40 and 50, all I have on my free body diagram are internal loads. There are no external loads. V equals N equals M equals zero. There aren't anything. So now what I want to do is take these bits and pieces of internal loads that I've found, the zero to 10 and the 10 to 20, and the 20 to 30, and the 30 to 40, and the 40 to 50, and graph them. V starts at 200 and is constant for the first 10 meters. After that, 
my V diagram is minus 10x plus 300. So I'm going to decrease with a slope of minus 10. Well, if I decrease over 10 meters at a slope of minus 10, I can get to 100. Or you can plug it in. If you plug in x equals 20 to v equals minus 10x plus 300, you get 100. For the next interval, v is now minus 10x plus 200 instead of plus 300. Essentially, what you've got is a situation where I have the same line, but instead of hitting the axis at 300, I'm going to hit the axis at 200. So I'll have a parallel line to my slope that I had before, but now it's going to start 100 lower. So I'll have the same negative 10 slope, but now I'm 100 lower. You can double check that at 20, this v is equal to 0, and at 30, this v is negative 100. Over the next interval, v is equal to 0. So I haven't got anything. And over the last interval, v is equal to 0. So between 30 and 50, v is just 0. To graph the m diagram, your first interval is 200x, which is a nice, easy thing to plot. It's just a line that starts at 0. It's got a slope of 200 over 10 meters, gets me up to 2,000 newton meters. The quadratic, minus 5x, squared plus 300x minus 500 increases like this up to 3500. Easiest way to do that is to put 20 into the sum of the forces into the equation for the mo internal moment at that point and figure out what it looks like or you can plug it into your calculator. In my next interval I've got minus 5x squared plus 200x minus plus 1500. That gives me a concave down that decreases to 3000. Over the next interval I've got 3000 so this is constant from 30 to 40, and 0 from 40 to 50. So those are my V and M diagrams, by definition, where you've drawn all of your free body diagrams, all of your internal loads, and solved equilibrium equations to figure out what your graphs look like.